Today we are counting down 10 creative tank designs. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Number 10 Trench Warfare, one of the more iconic battle strategies, was developed during World War I. With this form of warfare, people found new ways to overcome the terrain and get the upper hand on the enemy. One of these inventions, the Louis Boy Iralt machine, was called an interesting ancestor of the tank. The problem with conventional vehicles and trench warfare was that wheels and ditches. On number 9. The Krupp Q Gel Panzer was a wonder waff, wonder weapon, of Nazi Germany. Its name translates to spherical tank, which already tips you off to the unique aspect of this vehicle. The Q Gel Panzer was never seen on the battlefield. But we know it existed because the Soviets captured one in 1945. Close inspection showed that it was made by the Germans and shipped to Japan. On number 8. Please like and share this video. In 1943, this tank was designed in the UK by County Commercial Cars Limited. It featured a long arm with a gun on the end, which could be elevated to fire over obstacles. The crew would lie within the long arm and operate it from there. The first prototype needed only one man to operate it, but this version of the Praying Mantis was rejected because it placed too much work on a single person. On number 7. As well as trenches, tanks faced another problem when deployed onto the battlefield, the dreaded mine. In response, Military intelligence began to research ways of clearing out minefields to allow tanks to pass through them without harm. Some of these ideas involved building special mine-sweeping tanks that could clear the way. The mine exploder T-10 had an unusual design that gave the impression of... On number 6. The Ketankrad was one of the smaller World War II cousins of the tank. It stems from the German Ketan, meaning tracks, and Kraftrad meaning motorcycle, and is exactly what it sounds like, a motorcycle that used tracks for locomotion. It also had an armored transport tail that could carry two soldiers and 500 kilograms, 1,100 pounds. On number 5. Unlike other minesweepers that depended on flails and wheels to trigger the mines, the Russian Progvev T blasted mines with so much heat that they detonated on their own. Built on the base of a T-54, the Progvev T looked more like a futuristic laser cannon than a tank. Instead of using a normal cannon, it used the engine of a MiG-15 fighter jet to blast heat at potential minefield. On number 4. Please leave a comment. Times. The best way to fight fire is with fire. That was the philosophy behind the Goliath Beetle a tiny tank whose job was to blow up much larger tanks. Designed by French engineer Adolphe Cagres, the Goliath Beetle was developed by Germany during World War II. After learning that the Germans had taken an interest in his design, Cagres attempted to hide the prototype by throwing it. On number 3. The Mendeleev Rybinsk Super Heavy Tank was designed between 1911 to 1915 by Russian scientist Vasily Mendeleev. Before you think that he made a typo while naming his tank, it's worth noting that his father was a famous scientist called Dmitry Mendeleev, which explains the origin of the name. Revolutionary for its time, the Mendeleev sported a 127. On number 2. E.1500 was born from a simple idea to combine the raw power of an artillery strike with the mobility of a vehicle. However, the recoil of an artillery gun needed to be handled appropriately to stop the vehicle from tearing itself apart. Thus, the concept for a super tank was born. If it had made it onto the battlefield, this massive tank would have been 42 meters. One. Finally, on number one. Please click subscribe button for more videos. 1907. James and I repeat used a screw-propelled vehicle to transport lumber through muddy and snowy environments. The ability for screws to make easy work of such environments was exactly why they were researched for military tanks. During the Allied invasion of Norway in 1940, it became evident that it would be hard to drive vehicles through the thick snow.